It's hard to find something more controversial in the country right now than Kinder Morgan's Trans Mountain Pipeline project. Here's the background. Kinder Morgan wants to expand their existing 1,000 kilometers of pipe so it will carry three times as much oil from Alberta's oil sands to the coast. The federal government wants it bad. They say it's critical to the future of the country. To environmentalists, it's a potential ecological disaster. So I'm gonna drive the pipeline route from Edmonton all the way to Vancouver and talk to the people who live along it. Maybe they can help us better understand what's at stake. First stop is in Nisku, just outside of Edmonton. At Blackjack's Roadhouse. Now this is a kind of unofficial union hall for oil patch workers. Thank you, sir. Clarence Shields is the owner. You're welcome. We could become self-sufficient as a country if we were to transport our oil and if we were to able to get our oil to Tidewater, all of a sudden we're self-sufficient. The view from Blackjacks is that oil powers the country and all Canadians can benefit from getting it out of the ground. That's the promise of the pipeline. We're going to drive the route of the pipeline. What would you say to people who oppose it? Think Canada first. That's the important issue. In order to keep us whole, we built a railway. In order to keep us whole, we built pipelines. This is really the economic future of the next generation. If we don't have access to our resources, we're gonna be a have-not country. That's what scares me. So that tells you. Yeah. Those are the stakes from someone who believes that more oil will only bring Canada more rewards. But then you drive into Jasper National Park and it's hard not to think of risk too. I mean, look at it. This might be the most beautiful place in the country. And the pipeline runs right through it. A spill here? Well, just imagine. Todd Noble has worked at the Jasper Sky Tram for 22 years. Show me where the pipeline is. Where well, it comes it in from the east, comes in around that um, mountain range and uh, towards town. Ten years ago, Kinder Morgan was here upgrading the pipe, and Todd kept a close eye on their work. They were in and out of here quite smoothly, uh, no issues. The impact on the area was minimal. Um, the area is not scarred. If anything, they came through here, and, and you'd never know they were through here, uh, by all accounts. So, Some people might be surprised. A, a pipeline expansion in a national park, the postcard of the country, and the guy who runs the tramway has no problem with it. Well, yeah, I think face value, it can seem maybe a little disturbing, but having experienced it before and how they manage the area, it's not such a scary thing to think about. The reality is there have been spills in Jasper, several of them. And along the entire Trans Mountain route since the 1960s, 82 spills in all. And that's the thing about pipelines. You don't really notice them until something goes wrong. This is what the existing Trans Mountain Pipeline looks like. It runs along here, but you can't actually see it because it's buried in the ground. I follow the pipeline across the border into British Columbia. It seems that here the popular belief is that everyone is against it because of environmental concerns. A couple of hundred kilometers down the road is the town of Blue River. I pull in at the Holy Smoke Inn and meet Patty Tyke. What would the pipeline mean for your town? Jobs, jobs, and more jobs. I know they're thinking of bringing in a 500-man camp. They came and they did a big open house, Kinder Morgan did, um, told us all how to apply for good-paying jobs. We just Patty tells me how her town has fallen on hard times since the logging dried up. The She's not worried about environmental risks. She's worried about Blue River. I love this place. It's, uh, it's just a jewel of the Yellowhead Highway, Blue River. It doesn't get any better. This whole valley needs it. We, we really need it bad. 
the jobs and just the people and everything. We need the pipeline to go through in order to survive. Come on, Kimmer. Kimmer, come. In BC, there are more and more people like Patty. Polls show growing support for the pipeline, now as high as 55%. That's not to say opposition isn't strong too. BC is a land divided. I drive a couple of hours south. Outside Kamloops, farms start to appear. I pull over in the village of Black Pines. Okay, that's the rooster. His name is Lucky. Lucky? It's lucky, yeah. No, he was lucky because we had a whole bunch of males and he was the best one, so he's the lucky one. The rest went to freezer camp. <laughs> <laughs> For Penny Power and Charles Hayes, it's simple. The pipeline would mean the end of their farm as they know it. What's Kinder Morgan's plan? If you can see it in this orchard, it's gonna be gone. They're gonna come in here. The pipeline is gonna come right straight through there, essentially right where we're standing. This whole orchard becomes their easement, their right of way here. Doesn't everybody have to sacrifice for the country? It's not for the country. If they wanna do something for the country, they can refine that oil here in Canada and sell it to Canadians. The problem, it's bigger than the farm, right? It's the, the problem is, that oil is a 19th century technology. And we're not having a discussion about what's next. What can we do instead of? It's just, oh, we've got to pump oil because you know we've been doing it now for 100 years and we don't know anything else. That wasn't easy. Listening to Charles, it's as if the Trans Mountain Project is a kind of referendum on oil. Sure, the pipeline is a national issue, but it's local too. It crosses the property of 2,200 landowners and each of them has to decide what to do. Another 250 kilometers south of Kamloops on the Fraser River is the town of Hope. The pipeline crosses right by the property of a local legend. Hear that? Well, that's Pete Ryan. Is it an owl? Yeah. He's coming out there, starting to shape him. It's the blocking of an owl coming up. Gotta get an owl ready, because you know a lot of smart guys out there we have to give some smart answers. <laughs> For Pete and the pipeline, there's no debate at all. Well, it's gotta get built. It's not a matter of it ain't getting built. If it don't get built, we're all in trouble. I think it's uh, good for the economy and uh, it should be done. Yeah, bring them, bring them in. Let's get her going. <laughs> Only about 40 kilometers south of Pete Ryan's chainsaw is Chiam First Nation. I stop him because one of the biggest misconceptions about the pipeline is that all indigenous people oppose it. The reality is First Nations are divided. The pipeline will be coming along at the foot of that mountain and... Ernie Cray is the chief in Chiam. The popular image of Indigenous people is we're not interested in participating in the economic life of the larger community. Wrong, as, as uh, President Trump would say, if I can uh, quote him or imitate him, wrong. Uh, we want this pipeline to go through so that we can improve our economic standing in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. Then we're not going to stand by and let a bunch of green groups uh, get in our way. What Ernie calls green groups are the environmentalists who oppose the pipeline. I've already told them because they've phoned me and they said, we're just trying to help you, Chief Gray. My response was, please, please stop helping me. I do not want your help. I don't know where they get off thinking that my community can continue to live in poverty in this country by opposing developments like this that we see as important. Ernie Cray believes in the pipeline so much that he says his community would consider investing in it to make sure it gets built. On the pipeline route, you can toss stereotypes and misconceptions onto the road. So our trip's almost over. Vancouver is just in front of us. And we have one more stop we want to make. We're going to go to Burnaby to the end of the pipeline because in Burnaby is where Kinder Morgan faces its biggest opposition. A permanent protest camp has been built just before the end of the pipeline. 
So open up valve to a revolution, devastate a pollution, demonstrate a solution, eliminate the confusion, cut wood. Coastal First Nations and environmentalists vow they won't let the project get built. So here I am, turning into stone and then I'll be standing here for years. More than 200 people have been arrested already. You know, even the Conservative Party... One of them is Atiyah Jafar. I felt a lot of power in the act of doing something bold and doing something where I wasn't just sitting back and watching these events unfold. Um, I want to be able to look my children in the eye years from now and tell them that I did what I could do to protect their future. Are you proud of yourself that you got arrested, that you, that you took that stand? My battle is with oil billionaires who think that they can get away with destroying the climate, with violating indigenous rights. So I would say that I'm very proud to stand in this fight against the Kinder Morgan pipeline. I'm very proud to stand strong. I'm very proud to stand strong. Those words could echo all the way back up the pipeline. I am very proud to stand strong. Could be something that everyone said along the route. And that's the thing. Sure, people don't agree on the pipeline, but each and every one of them is passionate about their community and the future of the country. <laughs> Nick Purden, CBC News, along the Trans Mountain Pipeline Route.